testing them. All right, I'm decked out. <laughs> I usually don't leave my house in this outfit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> however, I didn't even notice it until you said this. Now. It's part of our theme today. So um, I guess everyone's heard the expression roll tide, right? Roll tide is a like a, a cheer or mantra that uh, state of Alabama, or the University of Alabama uses for their football games. And if you think about uh, how they have stayed on top for this amount of time, um, they literally have been engulfing their opponents for years on end, including the University of Tennessee. I will tie this in with yoga, I promise. <laughs> so um, over the weekend, these two rivals got to play. And Tennessee has lost for the last 15 years. And we won. <laughs> and very happy about that. However, that's not where I'm going with this. Tide also can mean an extreme amount of emotion, which was demonstrated by the UT fans. <laughs> <after we won. laughs> they all went to the field. They tore the goalposts down and took it all the way to the river. I don't know, some tradition that they've done. Anyway. My point in bringing this game up and wearing this today for celebration is the fact that there's a couple things that I want to share with you that ties this experience into our yoga practice. Uh, my son is 15 years old, and when he was probably four or five, <laughs> I decided to introduce him to football during a Tennessee Alabama game on Saturday. And I had no idea he was going to attach to that sport and be such a football fan. But what has impressed me is that he has stayed loyal to this team, even though they have pretty much sucked for the last decade. <laughs> <laughs> and his dad has been heavily influential on getting him to become a Braves fan and getting him to become a Falcons fan and tried his hardest to get him to turn into a Georgia fan. <laughs> Georgia has been very good as well. So I've been proud of my son for staying loyal to the team that he chose to be his team at such a young age because most kids just want to be with the winning team. And so I literally, like I am not a huge sports person, but I literally cried at the end of that game because it was a moment that I got to have with my son because we finally got a reward after him being loyal all these years. So bringing loyalty into yoga. So if you look at the term devotion, devotion is a form of loyalty because it's showing dedication. Devotion in yoga is called bhakti yoga. And so with bhakti yoga, you don't even have to be doing an exercise practice. You can be a bhakti yoga without ever doing a downward piece of yoga. We're all bhakti yogas to some degree. What are we devoting to? So think about where does your devotion lie? And the other thing that I want to bring up is the term Tapas. Tapas is a piece of yoga philosophy. Tapas means to discipline, to train, to burn to place. And so discipline requires a lot of fire, a lot of dedication, a lot of devotion. So even this yoga principle is about loyalty. Now I've seen and witnessed people come to yoga and want the quick fix. Right? They want to lose weight, but they'll come for like three months and then you'll never see them again. Yoga is not a quick fix like that. But yoga is time tested and true. It's been around for thousands of years. Has CrossFit? No. No, it hasn't. I have seen students chase the trends. You know, they'll jump on the yoga train, and they'll jump on the Pilates train, and then they'll jump on the CrossFit train, and then they'll cross on the title boxing train, or whatever the next trend is, orange theory, whatever. 
And nothing's wrong with experimenting and exploring all these different modalities, especially if you're wanting that workout. But there's so much more that you can get in yoga besides just the physical exercise. There's so much more that you can gain for the power of the breath. There's so much you can gain for the mindfulness and the meditation. And that's not even touching on the philosophy that you can get innovative and learn from and transform with. So basically, I'm sharing all this to encourage you to stay loyal to the practice, stay loyal to why you're showing up to begin with, because I guarantee you the benefits are innumerable. Keep learning, keep exploring, keep practicing, and you will get rewarded. And it's not just, yay, we won the game, right? <laughs> Even though that's fun. Okay, so we're going to start on our back. And when you come down to your back, what I would like you to start with is the pose that we sometimes do in the end, where we expand and open the body out, kind of like a starfish. So let your arms spread out, let your legs spread out. Take up room, take up space, even spill off your mat. And then close your eyes. If your arms are slightly above your shoulder level, you're going to find that it helps to uplift your chest. It can even brighten your mood. You might even notice a little extra curvature through your low back. Notice right now what has contact to the floor and where these places are a little heavier. For me, it's the head and the sacral. For you, it may be pronounced more in other places. But just take note. And take a deep breath in through your nose and let the breath fly out of your mouth. Just let yourself ground. Moving back into your body. Back to the intention for why you showed up to begin with. And then mixing in this theme about loyalty, devotion, this. So the best thing you could do right now is begin to activate your breath and to stay mindful of the breath throughout the practice, regardless of the poses you can or can't do, what you feel strong in or weak in. Allow your breath to become so strong that it feels like a tidal wave coming up to wash over your heart and mind. And let's begin some mindful motion. Let's begin our first exercise by pulling the feet closer together. When you pull the feet closer together, stack your hands up underneath your seat and then point out through your toes. We're going to do double leg lifts. So when you're ready, pike the legs up towards the ceiling as you breathe in. Flex through your ankles, keep your legs straight and lower down, leaning with your heel, <laughs> hover right above the floor. Inhale, point the toes, pike the legs up, flex the ankles, and lower them back down. Continue with this process, and if for any reason this is too difficult for you right now, you can just focus on one leg at a time alternating between right and left. Notice what's being engaged here, the lower abdominals, the hip flexors, the quads, the hamstrings. Let's do one last. 
And on this last one, when you descend your heels down, hover and hold, hover and breathe. And then eventually lower the feet and remove your hands from under your seat. Now you're gonna lace your hands behind the back of your head. When you're ready, you're gonna pull the left knee in towards your chest and you're gonna keep the left elbow to the floor, but you're gonna pick the right arm up and cross it over towards the knee. Doesn't have to touch. And then as you inhale, lower back down, extend the left leg. Exhale, bend the right knee, cross the left arm over. Good, and inhale, recline. Exhale, right arm to left knee. Inhale, recline. Exhale to the other side. So right now we're doing some core work. And we're also working the side obliques. If you want to amp this up, Yogi's Choice, you can keep the straight <laughs> leg hovering. So that heel is a few inches off the mat. You can even keep your head off the floor so you're contracting the core more through the transition from one side to the next. We're building up some inner heat. We're also building some inner strength. Discipline stems from this third chakra, this solar plexus. Devotion stems from the heart. The two meeting can provide loyalty. All right, let's go ahead and recline back down to that first pose we took that's creating the shape of like a starfish. Now breathe into the belly, giving the abdominals a miniature break. Take one last deep breath. And then inhale, walk your feet in towards yourself. Roll over to your right side. Push down through your left palm and come up. All right, we're going to come up to stand. We'll get right into it. <laughs> so when you're ready, stand at the top of your mat, spread out through your toes, broaden the base of each foot, and bring your hands to prayer position at your heart. All right, when you're ready. Shift your weight onto your left leg. Go ahead and place your hands now to your hips or waist and lift your right knee and flex the right ankle. Push back through your left thigh bone. This is Padakusasana A. When you're ready, inhale, extend out through the right leg. Padakusasana D. From holding Padmasasana D, fixate your eyes at one spot. And then cross your right ankle over the left knee. Start to come into your balancing chair. Hands to prayer position. And inhale, slowly straighten out and lower the right foot. Sweep the arms up overhead. And then exhale, come down into your Uttanasana, your standing forward fold. Now we warmed up the hamstrings just a bit, but they may still feel fairly tight since it's earlier in the day. Press down through the soles of the feet, lift up through your kneecaps, and bow over with your upper body. On your next inhale, reach the arms forward towards the front wall, come all the way up to stand, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bring hands back to your waist, shifting your weight onto the left foot and starting to lift the right knee. Oh, wait a minute. Yes. Sorry, yes. sorry, sorry, sorry. Right leg grounded, left knee up. Thank you for calling that. Right thigh back, heart lifts, gaze is set. Good, now extend into Padakusasana D. 
And then cross the ankle, sit down with your hips, hands can return to the heart. Balance and chair. Burning my body is no burden, it is light as air. Inhale, straighten up, land your left foot. Take your arms up overhead, this time upward worship. We're gazing up towards your wrists. And then as you exhale, fold again, Uttanasana. When you come down to Uttanasana, gravitate the heart a little lower towards your knees, a let go in your neck. Affirming here, nothing in the world on this earth can hold me down or back. Inhale, come halfway up, slide your hands up your leg bones. Reach out through the crown of your head, look out with your eyes. And as you exhale, bow back over and down. On your next in breath, your left foot's going to step way back. Stay on the ball of that foot. Condition the big toe on that front foot down to the floor and reach the arms up to crescent lunge. Keep the front thigh rolling open so the knee doesn't collapse in. And we're going to start to move the body. This is going to be the in breath. As we exhale, we're going to hinge forward, hover over the front thigh, and splay our arms out. Inhale, driving up, crescent lunge, and then exhale, folding. Now continue as you breathe. Two more. Now hover here, gaze down just past your foot. And then exhale, lower your hands down, step back into plank. Once you come to plank, you're gonna use your quads and core to rock forward. Lower down to chaturanga like a low push-up. Inhale, open your heart to upward facing dog. And we're gonna exhale, come back down to the floor into a prone position. Your arms are going to spread out like a T. You're going to come to rest on your chin or brow. We're going to do three locusts. When you're ready, inhale. You're going to fly up through your limbs, through your head, through your heart, and exhale, release. Two more. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Inhale, soar up. This time, hold and breathe. And I know it's challenging to breathe here because the diaphragm muscle is right underneath the rib cage. But if you're breathing in a diaphragmatic way, you'll find that you soar up a few inches on the in breath and you drop slightly on the out breath. Then exhale, bring the brow down, your palms down, your feet down. Inhale, push up to all fours. Exhale, curl your toes. Launch into downward facing dog. Now keep your hands shoulder distance apart. Lift up and out of your wrists. Sail up through your hips and gaze back towards that face between your feet. Breathe into your back lungs if you can. Create some purification for both the mind and the body. So on your next inhale, let's step that left foot all the way forward and up between the hands. Once your feet have that firm foundation set, it's safe to come up, crescent lunge. Palms are going to face each other. Right thighs rolling towards the front of the rib. Hips are pretty square. When you're ready, we're going to start to move. Exhale, pour over, spread your wings. Inhale, coming back. And exhale, folding out. And continue a few more rounds in sync with your personal breath. Wow. 
last one. This final one, we're going to fall briefly. Stabilize that front knee. And then lower the palms down, our fingertips down, step the back foot forward, and drop it to self. Now let the blood flow come down to replenish the skin of the face. Let the energy pour down towards the sensory organs, the top of the crown of the head. It represents unity and oneness. So on your next in breath, go ahead and root down, circle the arms up overhead. Thumbs up for worship at the top. Exhale, bring the hands to the palms, sweet palms to the arms. All right, hands are back to the waist. We're shifting the weight to the left foot. We're lifting the right knee and flexing the ankle, Padre Gusasta A. Balancing. Breathe. See if you can extend, Padre Gusasta in the D. Going into that same sequence, balancing chair. And up, lowering the foot, circling the arms up overhead. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Straightening out through the leg bones, decompressing the low back, gaining the benefits of being converted. All right, inhale, shoot your arms forward and up. Exhale, hands come back to the weight surface. Now shifting the weight onto the right leg, picking up the left knee, flexing out the left foot. Straight in the leg, Padre Gusasana D. Crossing the ankle, sitting deep in the hips, balancing chair. Inhale, straightening up, landing the left foot, reaching the arms up overhead, up with worship, and then exhale, folding straight down. Once you fold into yourself, allow for a moment of introspection. Meditation can be defined as self reflection. On your next inhale, we're going to go ahead and set the left foot back. Once you lower the left foot, you're going to ground the heel so that whole foot is flat to the floor, coming up to Varavadrasana 1. When you come up to Warrior 1, rotate that left hip towards the front of the room. Connect your hands together, lace the fingers to Temple Mudra, and lean your head back and look up. If that's too challenging, you can do the regular warrior. One. From this exalted form, take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, lift your head and let your arms come alongside your ears so you're looking forward again. The next round, we're going to lean forward, lightning lunge. Apply a lot of pressure into your back foot. We're not going as deep over the front thigh as we did earlier. But we're going to come into walking stick pose, peeling the back foot off the mat, leaning forward, reaching through the forefingers, reaching through the back heel, gazing straight below the face. When you're ready, bend the right knee, tiptoe the left toe to the floor, then bury the heel to the mat. Lift your chest slightly, lightning lunge. 
Come back up, warrior one. Exalt the warrior, leaning the head back. Fan your arms out. Lower the palms. Spin off the back heel. Right foot plank. From holding plank, shift forward, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, lift, up dog. Exhale, roll to a prone position. Slide your arms out like a T. Three locusts like we did earlier. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release. Continue. This third one, hold and breathe. Strengthen and stimulate that diaphragm muscle. Strengthen and tone your glute muscles. Exhale, feet down, hands down, head down. Inhale, push up all fours. Exhale, curl the toes, downward facing dog. Hold here, now we're facing down. Making sure the belly's hugging in so you're supporting the lumbar area of your back. Micromanage your breath. Inhale, we're stepping the left foot forward this time. Good, when you step that foot, foot forward, you're lowering your back heel to the mat, you're coming up, Virabhadrasana one. Same sequence, second side. Link your hands together to that simple little drop. Bring your head back to exalt the warrior. Affirming here, I attune myself to the wheel of higher power. This way the energy is being direct. Lift the head up, look forward, and then lean your torso forward. Not very deep. Heart still shining ahead. Now peel the back foot off the mat. Turn the toes down on the back foot. Let's stay even. Bend the left knee, tiptoe the right toe down, back heel down, lift the chest, like lunge. Come back to Viravadrasana, exalted formation. Fan the arms out, hands down. Spin off the back heel. Back foot steps forward, lower down and in. Inhale, lift halfway up, lean the out through the bird leg. Exhale, close back into self. Nothing. No one on this earth can hold me down or back. I'm showing my true devotion and loyalty. What is your loyalty? Why? Is it in your relationship? Is it with the company that you work for or your favorite sports team? Inhale, circle the arms up overhead. Exhale, bring the hands out to the heart. All right, we're going to change this up a little bit. And here we go. Inhale, hands to hips. When you're ready, shifting your weight to the left foot, uplifting the right knee. Padi Vistasana, A. Padi Vistasana, D. Crossing the ankle, balancing chair. This is where it's going to change up. You're going to see if it's possible to twist to your left. Maybe the elbow can go to the arch of the foot. Just do your best. When you're ready, come out of the twist, land the foot, come on up. 
arms lift, exhale, fold. So if you get frustrated with the balancing sequence, just realize how much your hamstrings is open thus far. <laughs> just shift your attention. Inhale, bring up, arms up. Exhale, hands to hips. I promise we're building up for a pose. Okay, I'm trying to get you really ready for it. Okay, landing line down your right leg. Lift your left knee. Pada Gustafsana D. I'm on a loose board. Sorry, I'm squeaking so much. All right, cross the ankle. Sit down deeper, balance in chair. And we'll see if it's possible to twist to the right. Leave it out if it seems insurmountable today. Okay, it's just yoga. The bigger yoga is more important than the smaller yoga, which is the poses. All right, come out safely, land the foot, bring it up, arms overhead, we're ready to flow again, and release down. Uttanasana. So we're gonna blend a little bit of this together, what we've been working with. Inhale, come halfway up first. Once you create that extra extension, exhale, lower. Inhale, left foot steps back. Arms reach up, crescent lunge. Take your time. Exhale, hand and fold. Spread your wings. Inhale, come back, crescent. Exhale, hand and fold. One more set. Not doing as many as we did the first time over. But once you're here, go ahead and spin down your back foot. Good. Inhale, warrior one. Lace your fingers at the top. Maybe lift the gaze. That throws you off and keep your head still. Bring the head back up. Lean forward on the out breath. Lightning lunge. Inhale, lift into walking step. Bend the front knee, bury the back foot down, lightning lunge, backing it up, warrior one, maybe backing the head up, exalted form, hands fan out and ground down. The right foot plank. Exhale, rock forward, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale to the belly. Going up with low fist again, spread your wings. Inhale, lift. Exhale, spill. Two more. And release. Inhaling up. Now hold and breathe. Exhale, hands down, head down, feet down. Inhale, push up. You're going to give them a very break. <laughs> Sleep back into child pose. Now, in child pose, if you want to separate your knees, to drop into that space in between you can. But please remember, if you're having some digestive disorders, it's actually better if I di for digestion to have the thighs knit together. We've got that second side to contend with here. So extend your arms in front of you. Make sure the hands stay shoulder distance apart. Rock up to hand and knees. And then let's take a downward facing dog. 
From Adho Mukha Svanasana, be here, breathe here. Keep your eyes open. Look at something in your room, even if it's just the back wall. Ready, we're gonna step in on that left leg forward. When you got the feet solidified to the floor, coming up to crescent. Once you feel balanced here, you can start to flow. We're gonna do this three times. Remember on this third one, when we hinge down, it's a good time to spin the back heel to the floor. Once it's flattened down, come up, bear the draws to the one. Link the hands to the mudra. Bring your head back, look up. Bring your head back in line with the arms, lean forward. Glue that back foot to the mat, and then lift it up, walking stick. Very similar to warrior three. Touch down with your back foot, land the heel, come up to lightning lunge. Back it up to warrior one. Back it up to exalt the warrior. Exhale, hands down. Step it up to the front. Hold down with your head in your arms. Inhale, pick me up halfway. Once you sprout up, lower back down and up. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. All right. Oh, I feel like I need to breathe a minute <laughs> before we go to the next sequence. <laughs> the next sequence, we're going to build up to an arm balance. Okay. <laughs> so just remember it's okay if you don't get it. It takes the devotion, the discipline, the loyalty, and it takes body genetics, it takes the strength, it takes all the other additives to create a successful pose. And it's okay if you can't get to this pose because it's a difficult one. But we're gonna do all the steps that we did with the balancing sequence, and then we're gonna try to fly the foot up. I don't wanna show you or tell you too much now. <laughs> I'd rather get you into it because you never know, you might be able to land it. Okay, so hands to the hips. We'll start on the left leg. So lift your right knee. Padavanstasana D. Balance and chair. Twisting and changing. This is where it can get tricky, okay? But if you can bring that hands down to the left on the outside, if you can keep that right foot attached to the left arm, bending the elbows and lifting the head, you might be able to fly the left foot up. And come back. Come up. I know it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot for me this morning, too. I had it better yesterday, but it's called hummingbird pose or grasshopper pose. <laughs> we'll try it for the second side. Any questions before we continue? Okay. Always like when the teacher had the back to me when we were doing something crazy. I don't always do that, but I'm doing that today. All right, landing line down the right leg. Hands to the hips. Lift the left knee. Take the left. Back 
balance and chair. That's okay to just stay here. This is where you're rocking it. Maybe the twist. Maybe staying in the twist, bringing the hands down, keeping the foot attached to the arm. Find the right foot out. Land in the foot, use your hands to walk back. And then you can safely come out. <laughs> That's one of those poses. It's a lot. All right, so I'm going to work on it at home <laughs> if you want to learn it. By the way, that one tends to be easier, I feel like, for women than the other version of getting into it, which is where we're sitting on the floor. And sometimes we get into it this way and then let. You know, but I've noticed we have a tendency to focus on the lower half of our body and then we're all the way down at gravity. It's a little harder to get the seat up and to buy gravity versus coming from the top down. Keep playing with it, you'll know what I mean. <laughs> all right, see it at the top of that. We're gonna bring it back down. We're gonna lift into regular chair. So the arms lift, the knees bend. Both feet on the floor initially. And then we bring the arms down, palms up, because we're gonna go into this other form of chair where we elevate the heels. From elevating the heels, maybe softening on down to toe balance. Hands to prayer. Gaze ahead. Stretch the feet. Bring them down. I'm not sliding back because I want my heels on the same back. It doesn't matter if you go off the back though. Well, your mat's a little wider, isn't it? That's cool. Oh, it's your tail. All right, flex your feet. Oh, make sure nothing's behind you. So that bolster just kind of slide it out of the way. Yeah. All right, and your arms are going to reach. Exhale, Hashimotanasana. Now, the nice thing is we've been warming up the hamstrings. <laughs> Makes this pose a little bit more accessible. Definitely not the same as Uttanasana because the seated form is more challenging for the pelvis and for the back. All right, inhale, Dandasana. Palms open though, just like we did in that chair to come down to the floor. We're gonna hollow out the belly by scooping it in. And as we start to roll, so go a little slower than me, as we start to roll down, we're gonna lower the head and circle the legs over the face. Please don't feel like the feet have to touch the floor. And please keep your head still. Now, to roll out, take your hands back to the mat, squeeze in the belly, roll it down one vertebra at a time. And then fly the arms up to build up. You got it, Heather. Do you want me to show you that? So from here, when you're rolling, as soon as your legs are like starting to lower, you can swing the arms up. Now exhale forward. Ashmo is an asana. You can come with palms up. Squeeze in the belly, roll it back. And if you don't do plow pose because of you know neck issues, just stay on your back and lift your feet. Do a waterfall. Nose and the loss of the plow, we're going to roll it back down. We're going to lift the arms to help to bring us up. Good. Exhale, hold. Plus, it's just kind of fun to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does anyone not need to be in plow pose because of the neck? Does anyone need to avoid it? You're okay. All right. 
So when we come at this time, we're going to roll back, same plow, but we'll change up the instruction once we're there. So do take your hands to support your back. And you're going to lift the right leg up and keep the left leg as is. Left foot flexed, right toes pointing towards the ceiling. Bringing this L for this theme today of loyalty. And then scissor the legs the opposite way. So bring the right leg over the face, sitting your left leg up. <laughs> now slowly lower the left leg and we're going to roll back out except this time we're not lifting up to sit we're just rolling out we're standing on the floor keep the head down Notice when you're lowering the legs, it's very similar to the piping that we did earlier. And once you lower the feet all the way down, now tuck the knees into your chest and wrap your arms lovingly around the shins. Flatten down your low back. Breathe down deep into your belly. Slow the thought currents. Your mind is not as busy, noisy, or scattered. Let your arms open out into the T form. Let your knees roll off to the left. Starting our cool down now. So lounge, relax, and breathe. Discipline merge with devotion. Create a strong link of loyalty wherever your loyalty lies. So Paramahansa Yogananda, who was one of the first pioneers who brought yoga to the West, he once said that loyalty should be the highest law. Inhale, draw the knees through center. And as you exhale, roll the knees off to the right. Make sure the feet go all the way down to the floor. Remember, you can always add a prop if it's aggravating your low back. So if it was aggravating your back, you could put a prop under your knees or in between your thighs.
Now let's roll to the right side body. Push down into your left palm to come up. So I would suggest grabbing your bolster. I would suggest either having it plugged under the thighs and knees with your legs straight or feet together. So depending on what you want there. But then I'm going to ask you today to see if it's probable to open your arms into the doleful star. You should call it goddess arms, but since we talked football, it's the same thing. I'm going to turn the overhead lights down. So if the back of your hands touch the floor, you're okay to stay here. But if the back of your hands don't touch, it may be a strain. And if it's a strain for the shoulders, I would rather you take a different position with your arms. Your loyalty should lie with yourself, but not go with the power of suggestion because you know your body the best. You're the one living in it. And you're the one holding all the deposits from your own life to cater to your needs. Hopefully by the end of this hour, you're starting to notice a shift. Maybe your body feels more tingly and awake. Maybe your mind is more calm and clear. Maybe your breath is open. And perhaps you've purified your heart. I would say loyal to your time here and the time you've already invested. By choosing one thing to focus on for the remainder of relaxation. Perhaps it's the music or just listening outwardly, inwardly. Perhaps it's watching and witnessing the breath ebb and flow. Maybe you need an affirmation, a mantra to repeat silently. Pick one.
You put more effort into your breath, you can start to maneuver your body, maybe your hands and feet at first. Maybe curling in after that. And perhaps rocking gently side to side. Massage your back. Feelings. Turning to your favorite side, coming up for a more formal seat. Drawing your hands together. It's just your grace and gratitude, but also it's a seal, a seal of our practice. Thank you for being here today. May we all remember to keep this practice up if we want to continue to reap the reward. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Namaste.